Welcome back. Well, as promised, uh, Rishabh Instruments, well, they made a steady debut on the exchanges. We have with us Mr. Dinesh Kumar Musalekar, uh, the group CEO, as well as uh, Mr. Nitin Kumar Deshmande, who joins us on the show. Hi, good morning, gentlemen, and congratulations on a pretty steady listing. Just a short while back, the stock was up close to around 5%. I think now it's tempered down, but it's still up close to around 2%. But the last time you all joined, well, we got a fair sense of business, but we couldn't get numbers. Now, since you're listed... Numbers is something that we're looking at. So let's get straight to it. What's the revenue guidance you're looking at for FY24? And as you all told us earlier, that FY23 margins were impacted because of ESOP cost, PAR cost as well impacted you all, as well as Forex. Now you could give us a guidance, right? Because things have improved and they've turned around in your favor. So what's the margin guidance as well? Yeah. See, uh, as we said in uh, our last interactions, yeah. Uh, Please we, go ahead. Uh, you know, 2023 was impacted by, yeah. So, I, 2023 was impacted by our um, uh, by material cost and energy cost and some ESOP uh, things, and those have uh, taken a reverse trend. And uh, we can uh, see that uh, during this financial year, uh, the margins uh, uh, should be much better, and uh, uh, the growth we already see, uh, like what we had in the last uh, two years, the trend continues on the top line. And the bottom line also is being corrected with all these three factors which we had spoken before. And we can have uh, a healthy trend of, uh, you know, we can talk about EBITDA in the range of uh, uh, anywhere between um, 17 to 20 percent kind of uh, EBITDA on a top line, which again, we're continuing with the trend, can be going from 20 to 22 percent. So that's the uh, numbers which we are uh, kind of uh, uh, Just to confirm uh, the thing And uh, mm -hmm. we see no risk. Yeah. yeah, just to confirm, <clears throat> just to confirm those numbers, top line growth you're saying 20 to 22 percent, and margins in the vicinity of 17 to 20 percent. Did we get that number correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we will be trending uh, forward okay. because uh, those were the kind of numbers which we are having in the past, and uh, they were affected by some of. Uh, uh, the things that happened in uh, 2023 and uh, the reverse effect of that has already happened. The material costs are going down, uh, the energy costs are stabilizing, and we also were able to pass on some of our uh, material cost on to our customers. So things have uh, uh, fallen in place how they were before. Okay. Uh, Dinesh, I'm assuming that the volatility that you saw uh, also impacted the cash generated from your business which stood at around 28 crores. It's increased from the previous fiscal, which was at around 13 crores, but it's still quite far away from that 53 crores that you generated in 2021. Uh, where do you expect the cash generated from operations to stabilize? What can you guide on in FI24? So, as I said, uh, uh, you know, uh, we don't want to uh, uh, speculate uh, numbers as, as uh, SEBI guidelines. We can give a range of what where we are going, and um, mm. so uh, you can uh, calculate with the with the with the with the turnover which we had uh, close to uh, 600 crores uh, last year uh, in mm. FI23. So we are talking about uh, these kind of uh, growths, uh, which I told about EBITDA and uh, this one. So that's the kind of cash which will be uh, generating uh, from the businesses. Okay. But what exactly is the utilization or maybe the capex going forward for the company? Are you all planning any kind of acquisitions? Are you all planning any aggressive capex? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as far as uh, 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 the capacity utilization and uh, uh, see, out of the 75 crore uh, proceeds which you are uh, getting from the IPO, 62 is already earmarked for uh, uh, capex expansion in uh, in uh, uh, in Nashik uh, Electronics Manufacturing Plant that will uh, take place in, in uh, this year and partly in the next year. Mm -hmm. So that is there. And we are also, as we said, one of the strategies for the company has been a inorganic growth for uh, acquisitions. So we are having some uh, companies in the eyesight which uh, we have engaged uh, both in electronic business as well as uh, aluminum die casting business, which are at a different stage uh, in uh, different places. And uh, they are not happened until they have happened. So you know how the acquisition mm. uh, things happen. But uh, this is something Thing which is already on the cards. Okay, all right. Uh, you know, you all have mentioned that innovation is going to be one of the keys for your product expansion. Uh, could you all tell us how much is your R&D spent as a percentage of sales, and where do you see that number headed? Two to three. 
yeah, two to three percent of our, uh, uh, our uh, you know sales uh, sales revenue is spent on R and D. So that's uh, what we, what has been done in the last uh, previous year, and we'll continue to do that as our sales base uh, grows. The absolute number of R and D expense also will be growing. We'll be spending in the in the range of uh, two to three percent for sure. And we have spent on uh, different, uh, you know, elect electrical automation is one area where a lot of uh, innovation is taking place. Then uh, there is a uh, uh, solar inverter is something which is uh, very uh, unique and very sure. important for India. And uh, there are no uh, manufacturers in India who design, develop and manufacture. So we are spending a lot of R&D efforts there. So these are a few of the areas where a lot of uh, R&D expenses will be going on. Okay, Mr. Deshpande, just leave us with some guidance with regards to what the demand is looking like when it comes to the domestic market. Currently, majority of your ex uh, revenues are from exports. Will that ratio change? And can you leave us with yeah. some guidance on the order book when it comes to the Indian market? Yeah, so, Indian market is very promising. As we all of us know, India has become the you know, capital of manufacturing. We are into absolute manufacturing. We have got. Uh, to manufacturing facilities in India. When we talk about the demand, there are various tailwinds. You know, previously also we spoke about uh, the key growth drivers which are driving the growth into Indian market. Typically, as uh, uh, Mr. Musalikal also talked about, one of the solar, you know, is the green energy is the talk of the town. We have got the solutions for this. We have got the solar string inverters right from 1 kilowatt to 100 kilowatt range. So that will be one area which uh, we'll be banking upon. Then. Um, Make in India factor has started working, you know, fantabulously, I would say. So a lot of inquiries are coming to us in terms of design, development, also for the contract manufacturing from various people currently, which probably they are doing in, uh, uh, you know, Europe, also in, in China. So a lot of these things are coming. EMS also we see is one of the, you know, very bright areas for us uh, as area of, uh, for the company to focus upon. So all these, I mean, the infrastructure development which is happening in India, uh, the solar, uh, uh, the solar area where which we are working upon. So the yes. Tailwinds are working very fine, and uh, whatever Kegar we have seen for the global market, India would be, you know, having one to two percent more than uh, what the global market is experiencing for sure. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for joining in, gentlemen, and giving us your take. Congratulations on a good listing. It's been good speaking to you both, Dinesh as well as Nitin. We'll keep in touch, and we look forward to having you all on the channel more often. For the time being, though, I think we'll have to slip into a short break. You come back, we'll continue our focus on the markets. Don't go anywhere.